Wow, isn't this a great looking bike? Do you know what this is? Do you know what kind of bike this is? In 1997, Lee Iacocca formed EV Global as a Southern California company to start designing and marketing electric vehicles. The EVG bike, or the e-bike, which began to be sold in 1999. There were several variations and options, including the police edition. This bike was ahead of its time, and the price actually wasn't bad, ranging from 950 bucks to 1300 bucks, depending on the options you chose. In its time, the 20 mile range was adequate. The 50 mile top speed seems a little slow, even though it was the common e-bike speed in Europe. The initial version used 24 volt, but it was soon upgraded to a 36 volt. This one's a 36 volt, which is currently considered to be the minimum for a basic e-bike today. It's a steel framed hardtail, along with a basic sprung steel fork. These features today would be considered basic today. The motor is made by a German company called Heisman. This, for its time, was a great great looking bike, but there's only one problem. This bike doesn't work. Let's see what we can do to get this thing going. Well, welcome back. Glad to see you can stop by again. And if you're new to this channel, I just wanna say thanks for stopping by and hope to get to see you again and again. Well, my neighbor was downsizing and he asked me if I wanted this bike. I thought it was a regular bike, but when I looked at it, it was an e-bike, a bike that has a battery and a motor in it, so you don't have to pedal if you don't want to. He told me the bike didn't work. He didn't know if it was the bike or the battery was dead or a bad connection. So let's take a look and see what we can do to get this thing going. I turned the bike on and nothing happened. There was no power, no lights came on. So let's remove the battery. The first thing we're going to do is turn these plastic clips. Open the door, you'll see this latch here. Just unlatch it and remove the battery. Careful, it's a little heavy. So let's take the battery out and set it aside. The first thing I wanna do is see if the bike works. So we're gonna put some power to it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna need is a couple of clips so we can make some short wires so we can get the batteries connected here. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna need some clips like this. And we're gonna need some heavy gauge wire, the heaviest that you got. This is something I just had laying around the house. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a couple of lengths of wire, about a foot, a foot and a half long, put clips on each end. You're gonna make two of them as shown. You're gonna need three 12 volt batteries. The bike is a 36 volt. So three times 12 is 36. Okay, we're gonna take those two cables that you made and you're gonna connect these batteries in a series. If you can picture a flashlight with three batteries in it, you'll notice that the batteries are set up to where it goes from positive to negative, positive to negative. Well, essentially, we're gonna be doing the same thing. Here's a simple chart that'll show you how it's done. It's pretty simple. Make sure you connect it exactly like the diagram. Okay, you can see me on the first battery connecting the positive to the negative on the second battery. So on the second battery, you're gonna to go to the positive post and connect a cable there and go on the third battery and connect it to the negative post and you're done. Now that you got the two cables connected correctly, now what we're gonna do and see if we have 36 volts. If each battery is charged, we should be getting 36 volts. If not, charge your batteries. You're gonna take a voltmeter and we're gonna see how many volts we're getting out of these batteries. And take your two probes, the red one touch the positive the black one touched the negative and see what reading do you get. Okay, I charged all three of my batteries and I'm getting 37 volts. Perfect. Now let's connect the jumper cables to the bike first. Okay, you can see I just got some basic jumper cables here. What I did is I taped off with some electrical tape so they don't touch each other and short out. The most important thing when you're connecting the jumper cables to the bike is not to create a short, otherwise you're gonna have more problems. Now we're ready to connect the jumper cables to the bike. Before we do anything, make sure the power on the bike, on the handlebars, is on the off position. If you look in the bike where the battery was at, you're gonna see two brass probes. On mine, the red wire is on the left side and the black wire is on the right side. You wanna make sure that you connect the jumper cables the same way, just like you're jumping a car. Red with red, black with black. You're going to do the same thing when you connect the jumper cables to the battery. Black to negative, red to positive. Okay, at this point we've got everything connected. Everything should be powered up. Now all we have to do is turn on the bike. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. 
Awesome, so far so good. You can see the green light up on top, it's telling me I have a full charge. Okay, let's look at the other side. Well, it looks like we have a power speed button here that goes high and low. The red button is the horn. You have a light meter that's telling you if your lights are on or off. You have cruise control and you have a light switch up on top for the headlight. Looks like the headlights aren't working. I'm going to need a bulb. Okay, the moment of proof. Let's see if this bike works. What we're going to do now is we're going to lift the rear tire up. We're going to give the bike some power and see if the tire starts to turn and see if we're getting power to the motor down there. Bummer, it doesn't go. Oops, forgot to turn it on. Wow, it works, awesome. I guess it's the battery after all. These batteries cost anywhere from $200 to $800 depending on which one you get. You can see that I'm switching the speeds and you can hear the motor go up to a higher speed. Sounds like it needs a little oil. I don't know if I want to take apart this Heisman motor apart and see what's in there. Maybe it just needs a little oil or grease. I'm going to have to look it up. But all in all, it sounds pretty good. Well, as you might guess, I'm happy that this thing works. Check out part two as I examine the battery and see what's wrong with it. Hopefully there's something really easy that I can fix. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and of course hit the bell. Until then, We'll see you at my next video. Bye.